Okay, let's go ahead and start talking about subsets and supersets. So um, these are pretty closely related topics here, so whenever you're talking about one, you can talk about the other. Um, but it's more common just to talk about subsets. Uh, they're more common, they're more useful uh, in later math classes. Um, they're just more commonly talked about, things like that. But again, whenever you talk about one, you can talk about the other. So we'll just talk about them both here in this video. So let's say we have two sets, A and B. So A is a subset of B if every element in A is also in B. Okay, so we say that A is a subset of B if everything in A is also in B. Okay, so the definition kind of makes sense. It's uh, almost what you think it'd be, right? So in, anything that's in the set A is also in the set B. Now B may have extra stuff, right? It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that everything in A is also in B. So A is a subset of B. And in this case, we also say that B is a superset of A. Okay, because uh, everything in A is also in B. So A is a subset of B. B is a superset of A. Same thing. So there's some notation that goes along with that, and uh, the notation is this here. So we say uh, A, and then subset uh, notation B, okay. So uh, some people like to use this notation, I like to use this notation. It's, uh, this isn't really the letter C, it's sort of like a C that's squished in, stretched out a little bit. So letter C, you squish it in, and then stretch it out, and you'll get just something like that, and then put a line under it. Okay, uh, so some people uh, don't include the line, um, so some people will say uh, like this. Um, I don't really like to do that because it is kind of ambiguous. Um, we'll talk about why it's ambiguous a little later in the video. But also, if you write it too fast, uh, then it might end up looking like a C. It'll just look weird and confusing. Uh, but if you do this, it's more clear what's going on if you do this. So anyway, uh, there's that. So that's one way of saying this. We could also say this. So B superset notation A. Or, again, some people do this. Um, but again, I, I do like to use this notation. So this notation is much more common than this notation, but this, this is a possibility you could say this. So A is a subset of B, or B is a superset of A. A is a subset of B, or B is a superset of A. B is a superset of A, or you could read it backwards, A is a subset of B, just like we read these backwards. Um, B is a superset of A, or A is a subset of B. Okay, so you can read those backwards. Um, anyway, so that's just the notation here. So let's, um, before we do some examples, let's talk about some properties. So talk about some properties here. So there's really only two properties to talk about uh, for now. So first of all, um, every set, so let's say we have a set S, every set is a subset of itself. Okay, so every set, whether you call it S or A or B or C or D or whatever you want to call it, um, every set is a subset of itself. So if that sounds weird, it's, uh, it's kind of a weird thing to say, but it's not weird that it's true, right? Think about it here. Um, a is a subset of B if every element in A is also in B. Well, uh, when we say S is a subset of S, we're saying that every element in S is also in S. Well, of course that's true, right? Uh, every element in S is, of course, also in S, just by definition of being an S. So of course S is a subset of itself. Um, now it's just weird to say that, right? But it's, it's still true. Um, and it's not really difficult to see why it's true. It's just weird. It's just strange. It's a strange thing to talk about. Uh, but anyway, um, S is a subset of S because every element in S is also in S, right? So every set is a subset of itself for that reason. And also uh, the empty set is a subset of every set, okay? So two properties here, let's, I guess we'll call this property one and property two here. Okay, so two properties here. Um, and this is kind of, so remember we talked about the empty set in an earlier video. The empty set is just a set with uh, no elements. Okay, it's, it's the set with no elements, uh, the empty set there. So, um, and it's a subset of every set. So that's a little more strange, um, but here, so here, A is a subset of B if every element in A is also in B. So the empty set is a subset of B if every element in the empty set is also in B. Well, the empty set has no elements. So, well, um, so the, as far as this definition goes, there's really no elements to talk about in the empty set. So that's sort of what's called a vacuous. We call that a vacuous truth. Okay, vacuous like that. Um, so the empty set is a subset of B, or uh, S over here, whatever. The empty set is a subset of S if every element in the empty set is also in S. Well, the empty set has no elements, so we could vacuously say that, yeah, every element in there is also in S. Um, but it's vacuous because there's not really anything there to talk about. Um, this notion of vacuous truth, is it, it goes pretty deep into a different uh, 
uh, kind of math class, but we don't really want to talk about that too much here. So it is kind of strange to think about, but just know that the empty set is a subset of every set. Okay, so again, if you want to say these in words, uh, this one says every set is a subset of itself, and this one says the empty set is a subset of every set. Okay, so again, it's pretty important uh, if you want to write that down, maybe. Um, every set is a subset of itself, and the empty set is a subset of every set. Okay, okay so that's the two properties here. Um, now let's talk a little bit more about notation um, before we do some examples. So we talked about this notation here. Now there's also uh, some other notation. So we could say A is a subset of B. Now uh, some people like to do, let's zoom in a little bit here, some people like to do this to indicate, um, so do the subset notation with a little slash through the line part only. So this indicates that A is a proper subset of B. So in this case A is a uh, proper subset. Okay, A is a proper subset of B. Okay, so what that means is that A is totally different from B. So remember, every set is a subset of itself. So if we just say A is a subset of B, then uh, it may be the case that these are actually the same set. But if you want to emphasize that they're different, that A is actually different from B, then you do the slash uh, through the line part only. Okay. So some people do that. Um, now you can't really do that with this notation, but also um, earlier we said this is ambiguous. So uh, most people use this the same way they use this, uh, but some people, uh, it's very rare, but some people do use this notation uh, the same way that we use this notation here. So some people use these the same, some people use these two the same. So that's why it is kind of ambiguous. Um, now it's not very common. I guess it depends on where you are or what you're reading. Uh, but some people use these the same. It's not very common though. I haven't seen it uh, that often anyway, but I have seen it. So just be careful about that. But that's why I prefer to use this notation or this type of notation here and then this notation here if necessary. Um, it's not really often necessary to use this notation here with the little slash through the line. But, um, just I just want to point it out in case you come across it, you're not sure what it is. That's, that's all it means, is that A is what's called a proper subset of B. So this emphasizes that A and B are actually different. Okay. And of course, you can do that with the other way around too. So you can say B uh, is a proper superset of A. And the slash can go this way or this way. It doesn't really matter. So B is a proper superset of A. Okay. So that's just uh, some more details about the notation there. So let's zoom out a bit and see a couple quick examples. So a couple quick examples here. Um, let's say example one. So uh, let's say we have two, three, five. So that is a subset of two, three, five, seven. Okay, why is that? Because every element in here is also an element in here. Here's two, it's also an element in here. Here's three, it's also an element in here. Here's five, it's also an element in here. Well, hey, here's a seven, but that's okay because it's over here and not here. Okay, so yeah, there might be extra stuff here. That's all that really matters. Or sorry, that doesn't matter at all. Sorry, that doesn't matter. All that really matters is that everything here is also over here. Is that true? Yeah. Two is here, uh, here and here. Three is over here also. Five is over here also. And that's it. Okay, that's all we have to care about. That's all we have to look at. So um, now in this case, these are different sets, right? So we could put a little slash through this line part here uh, to indicate that they're different. But it, you know, we don't really have to. We can just look at them and see, oh, they're not the same. But um, some people like to do that. Some people insist on it. And it's just uh, whatever you got to do. But I um, just want to point that out because it might show up uh, in things you're reading or in your course or wherever. So anyway, uh, how about example two? Now what if we have two, three, five, and uh, two, three? Now this first set is not a subset of this set. So what we do is this. So the subset notation with the slash through the whole thing. In case you be careful about that. So this just means 2, 3, 5 is not a subset of 2, 3. Or we could say 2, 3 is not a superset of 2, 3, 5. Okay, why is that? Well, remember, to be a subset, A is a subset of B if every element in A is also in B. Is every element in here also in here? No, right? 2 is in here, that's fine. 3 is also in here, that's fine. What about 5? 5 is not in here. Okay, so there's an element here that is not in here. So this guy is not a subset of this guy. Uh, likewise, in example one, um, this guy is not a subset of this guy because this seven is not in here. Okay, this one is a subset of this, but this one is not a subset of this. Okay, 
So just like over here, 2, 3, 5 is not a subset of 2, 3. Okay, but 2, 3 actually, so it does go the other way though. Uh, 2, 3 is a subset of 2, 3, 5. Because every element here is over here. Okay, but it does not go the other way. Okay, so just be very careful about that. And again, we could put a slash through this line part here uh, because they are totally different, so we can just emphasize that. Okay, so um, anyway, just a couple quick examples here with subsets and supersets. So just some things to be careful about there. Um, also, one other thing we want to point out. Um, remember we talked about equality of sets, so two sets are equal if they have the same elements. Okay, so if we say A equals B and A and B are sets, um, then that's the exact same thing as saying, okay, so this double-headed arrow here means exactly the same as uh, A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Okay, so in other words, uh, A equals B, that's exactly the same thing as saying A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Okay, so if you have two sets that are subsets of each other, then it turns out they're actually the same set. Okay, so that's all this is saying here. So um, if you have to prove that two sets are equal, so this is how it's done. If you have to prove that two sets are equal, you pr uh, first prove that one is a subset of the other, and then you prove it the other way. So if you want to prove that two sets equal uh, each other, A and B equal each other, first prove that A is a subset of B, and then you prove that B is a subset of A. Okay, so if you ever have to do a proof like that, that's how you would do it. Prove that one's a subset of the other, and then prove that the other is a subset of the first one. And then that's how you would do that. Okay, so anyway, that's um, just the definition of subset and superset with a lot of notation and uh, a couple properties here and uh, some quick examples. And again, two sets are equal, um, and that means exactly the same thing as one's a subset of the other, or they're subsets of each other, basically. Okay, so let's, um, well, let's talk about why this is true real quick. So A is a subset of B. That means every element in A is also in B. B is a subset of A means everything in B is also in A. So basically, Everything in A is also in B, and everything in B is also in A. If you combine these two together, then that means there's no extra, there's no leftover elements in either one, so they're the same. Okay, so here, 2, 3, 5, 2, 3, 5, 7, everything in here is also in here, but there may be extra stuff here, right? That could happen. Just like here, everything here is also here, but there may be extra stuff here, okay? and it turns out there is. Um, now here, A is a subset of B, okay? Now if A is a subset of B, everything in A is also in B, but there may be extra stuff in B, okay? But actually, if we also say that B is a subset of A, then that means that everything in B is also in A. So there's no extra stuff in B, because this is true also. Likewise, there's no extra stuff in A, because this is true. So both of these together uh, tell us that, okay, everything in A is in B, everything in B is in A, there's nothing in A that's not in B, there's nothing in B that's not in A. Okay, so it's all just crazy fancy ways of saying A and B are exactly the same set, because they both have exactly the same elements, everything in A is in B, and vice versa, everything in B is in A. Okay, so A and B are exactly the same thing. So um, we'll talk a little more about subsets, things like that, and uh, see some more uh, definitions and things related to sets uh, coming up in the next few videos. So that's the notion of subset and superset here.